scientists to engage in what is one of the most um, difficult challenges facing people. How can they be helped to be better prepared, to be more resilient? Huge advances and leaps in science over the past 50 years, literally, have made it so that today a range of climate forecasting, climate risk management tools are available to decision makers all over the world. That forecast, that prediction has got to help people improve their chances of success, improve their chances of winning and reduce their vulnerabilities. The real aim is to bring together the people who have the information and the people who want to use that information so that through dialogue people can get access to information that will really change their lives. The dialogue between the scientists and also the user of the research from the scientists still have obstacles. We have a missing link, you know. You have all this beautiful research, and what do you do with this? Do you present it to the policy makers? Do you inform the community? Maybe the scientists, they do the research for the sake of the research. But what is the use of doing all this research and asking the community lots of questions when you don't come back to them? If we want to make sure that the science is useful, then they have to make sure that whatever they develop, the approaches, the techniques, the methods, actually are understandable by the users. I'm not convinced that there is a, a magic wand that can bring science to the people quicker. What I would appeal for is that no matter what the time scale required, whenever the science is ready, then scientists should work with people to apply it. The levels of literacy amongst humanitarian development organisations, communities at risk, is really, at the moment, very, very low. Loads of work to do to get those communities and policymakers ready for the new science and start using what is already possible. Science and knowledge only uh, can uh, benefit civilization and life as long as we make it become practical and implement it in our daily lives. I think the challenge here is for the scientists and the researchers to come down from their ivory tower and start engaging with the communities. It is very dangerous to generalize everything because a hazard is very site specific. There is a trust gap also among the common people. So we have to have a proper dialogue to convince them that scientific research for community-based or the disaster risk reduction techniques like early warning system, it is for you. It's not only that the communities understand how the science will benefit them, but also they have the ownership, the belief, the drive to make sure that they put it into their daily life and into daily practices. Lots of study has been done, but it is not been communicated to the community in a right language, which community can understand. At the operational level, there is no such instruments that can be used for sustaining the dialogue. The very infrequent meeting of these communities with each other might well be one of the major reasons why the messages don't get across from either side. Subsistence farmers in developing countries actually make quite sophisticated use of probabilities. They are taking chances every, every year, every season. People are really dealing with this uncertainties. Somehow we have to quantify that. We have to translate that into a more simple language for people. Any government will be in power for a certain period and because of that, the thinking of any problem is a very short-sighted and they want a very quick solution and because of that, there are lots of problems. Well, there have been some dialogues. Uh, we have not been promoting the dialogues in a consistent, sustainable manner. It is something that we need to look into and uh, see how we can actually bridge the connection between the two communities. 
ngelmu iku kelakone kanti laku Penis also have the same uh, sentence ngelmu iku kelakone kanti laku science is only effective if only science can be applicable in the daily lives of the people. I have seen some good practices and also more maybe things that could be improved in using the scientific information and making decisions. These tools today can make a difference between a house being flooded and a family having to scrap their belongings and run to safer grounds and a family knowing well in advance that something is going to happen, they need to be ready and their quality of life shall be maintained in that sense. We have scientific, academically sourced information that can come together with more community-based information to create indicators for early warning systems and early action but only by looking at it in a really specific, context-specific area can you start to have proper meaningful dialogue and meaningful steps forward to actually make that happen. The challenge of actually delivering a scientific message is often as great as the science itself.